What's going on, everybody? This is your boy, Jonathan Johnson, here with In Between, a platform that is set to empower people uh, with the knowledge to make the right choice. And you see that we are on uh, Zoom in the midst of this corona, this COVID-19, this pandemic. We got to be uh, innovative. So we have taken the social distancing serious. And this quarantine won't stop the good message of making the right choice from getting out. So why don't y'all do me a favor and subscribe to the channel like this video and always always comment and share this with everybody that you know so you see that i have uh, these two beautiful people here with me uh today we're going to be talking about uh mental health during the coronavirus during covid19 how to make sure your mind is intact so that you're not uh going crazy so i'm um, a half here kiana and a half here larry uh kiana introduce yourself to the people hello everyone um i'm kiana um, wife of uh, about five years, mother of two boys. Um, yes, my life is work, church, family. I love it. Larry? Hey, hey how you guys doing? Uh, my name is Larry, also go by LJ. Um, I am single. Uh, <laughs> I live in South Minneapolis. Um, I'm a mental health practitioner. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm right now. I'm, I'm indoors doing work, so I've been, been home a lot. But uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Yeah. So we heard that Larry is a mental health practitioner. Uh, Kiana, could you share with the people what it is you do for a living? Yes, I'm a licensed alcohol and drug counselor. Wow, that is amazing. So we got mental health and individuals who may struggle with uh, alcohol and drug abuse. So we have uh, two profound individuals on this uh, today's Zoom episode platform uh, uh, situation. And I think this is going to be amazing. So once again, subscribe and like, and you'll see their uh, social media stuff at the bottom of this page. So now let's get into the, uh, the episode. So I'm gonna ask you guys a few questions. You guys answer them to the best of your ability. All right? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, so we're talking about uh, mental health during this coronavirus. And I think a lot of people may, may struggle with the definition of mental health and may choose to think of that or put different words in it and kind of mess it up. So could you help the people uh, with a definition of what mental health is to you? I can go first. Um, so I kind of, I was, I was thinking about this and I mean, how I usually think about it is like, you know, how we take care of ourselves mentally. Um, mm -hmm. Another way of that is kind of like, what is the cognitive process that you use in order to like, uh, make sure that you're functioning regularly, regularly on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, again, cognitively, how well you're able to take care of yourself. And I like to even extend that into how well you take care of your family or your loved ones or your community. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's good. You said extend that. So, so are you saying the mental health stretch is far just beyond you and touches on others? Yeah, I think I think uh, we're gonna talk about this a little bit as well. But I think even as we look at a crisis like COVID nineteen, um, we it's a it's a global crisis, and so whether it's global, community, um, or individual, we're all impacted on each level. And so if I'm not healthy individual as an individual, it impacts my family, it impacts my community, and it impacts the world around me. I mean, that's good. I Man, I love it. Kiana, what about you? What's the what's the definition of mental health to you? Yeah, I agree 100% that it, it affects whoever you come in contact with. Um, I would say it's your um, emotional state um, that then turns into your psychological state um, and then your social well-being. So pretty much what he just said, um, um, it affects how you um, think, like you said, how you cognitively process um, and, and then how you act. Um, so around other people, um, how you are with yourself. I know that sounds weird, but some people are not comfortable in their own skin. Right. So um, it affects all of that as a whole. Mm. That's good, that's good. So we understand now the definition of mental health that we've understood from these two people. So uh, in this corona, in this pandemic, why do you think people are struggling with their mind and their mental health during this season of time? Why do you think people are? I would say it's because everything that uh, people would typically use to um, mitigate or um, help sustain their mental health has been taken away. Yeah. So now you have individuals um, in the house um, staring at the wall. Yeah. What am I supposed to do with 
how I feel or how I don't want to feel. Um, so everything has been stripped from mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, so that, and if you don't know how to cope, that's, that's, that's a recipe for disaster. That's good. Larry, what about you? Yeah, I, I like that response. Um, and I think that, um, well, in, in therapy, um, change is like the, the focus of therapy. Um, yeah. and so when it's difficult to change on your own, it's already challenging. And then when you get hit with something like this, where you're forced to change in your whole life, changes and it's out of your control um i think that is a big impact um and you know just seeing um seeing the media panic um is contagious so then we panic as well we feel like we're not in control of ourselves and so i think that's a, a big part that um is played into um uh, what's happening right and you we just, weren't prepared we, were. yeah. we didn't yeah. have time to say okay this is what i will do this this and that it mm -hmm. just suddenly yeah larry you hit on something i want to kind of raise raise a little bit more you said uh the media so you're you're handling the family issues and kiana's handling the, the substance abuse so how important or how how has you think media impacted our minds and mental health during this uh corona time whether it's with your family whether it's with substance abuse anything how has media impacted us in our minds during this time yeah, I think it's heavily impacted us. Um, I mean, that's where we get our information. Um, I remember watching an interview or a, um, just a speech that Denzel had did, and he was talking about how, like, um, or Denzel Washington, how he was talking about, like, uh, what's meant uh, to better? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> how if you don't watch the um, media or the news, then you're not informed, and then if you do watch it, you're misinformed. And so I think we're getting a lot of information all at one time. And like Kiana said, we weren't prepared for this. So we're trying to process it in, in real time um, and very quickly. Um, and people are losing their jobs during that time. People are trying to figure out how they're going to take care of their kids during that time. And that's a lot to have to manage all at one time. And so I think for what I've been able to do is I – I, I watch the media, I watch the news, but it's like one time, once a week. Mm -hmm. um, right. like, I'm getting some information and I know I'm going to miss some during that process, but I'm going to hear it from other people. I'm going to hear it if I go on social media. It's everywhere and always around me. Um, and so limiting, controlling myself and being able to limit how much I intentionally go search for it. Um, mm -hmm. is hmm. You hit on a good word, I'm intentionally searching for it. That's a good word right there, Doc. Right. What about you, Keanu? Um, so in the, in the substance use world, um, all over the media, you're hearing that the liquor stores are essential. Wow. And so propaganda or, um, you know, this exclamation point behind this is essential is, is putting into people that, oh my gosh, I have to have this to survive this. Mm. And so now you have, you're going to have a lot of alcoholics coming out of this because that is all people are using now to sustain themselves um, and then those that um, already knew they were alcoholics um, now those people are coming to get help because they're figuring out this is not the only thing that is going to get me through this is this is making everything way worse yeah. um, so media has really planted terrible seeds in people's um, brains about what's really essential. Mm. So, so I want to ask you guys both a question. I'm going to ask Kiana first and I'm going to go to Larry. So, so Kiana, for people who are, you know, they're saying liquor stores are essential. For people not, as you said, people, there, there's going to be a lot of people who come out as alcoholics. So what advice would you give people to, you know, not fall into that trap of becoming an alcoholic during this time of Corona? I mean, it's easy to say, don't buy it. <laughs> like, don't go to the liquor store. Yeah. Um, but it's just having that self-awareness of, yeah. I'm literally at home drinking all day. Seriously. I wake up and the first thought is drink. I need to drink. I need to drink. I need, I need something. Um, you can't go around nobody else, really, and do it. And if you are, I mean, but it's just, there. people are going to start realizing that that's not, that's not all there is. Um, and to what practices or, or, or activities or substitutions can people put in place to not, 
fall to when I wake up, my alarm goes off. Oh, gotta run to the gotta run to the cabin and grab that henny. Gotta run to the cabin, right. grab that 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 Ciroc, whatever it may be. What practices do you think people could uh, practice to keep them from doing that? Well, they have to provide themselves with some kind of structure because um, you know people that have been sent home now they got all this free time at home. So mm -hmm. providing structure, so still having things to do um, strategically. And um, okay, from this time to this time, I'm gonna work out. Yeah. From this time to this time, I'm gonna make sure I talk to somebody mm -hmm. um, and, and making sure that they're not isolating um, because then that's another way where, um, you know, substances can creep in or, you know, poor mental health will creep in is when people start to isolate. And during this time, I mean, it's inevitable. You, you are separated from people. So um, just being on top of a schedule and having um, something that you're still doing all day and so that that thought is not there. Wow, that's amazing. So, so Larry, people who during this corona who may be having family issues, how, what advice would you give them? What, what, what advice concerning choices could they make that could help them during this family issue time that they could be having during Corona? Yeah, I would, I would totally agree with what Kiana was saying that it's a, it's a structural thing. We, we look at, um, we look at like uh, troubled youth um, and some of the statistics are like youth who don't have anything to do after school or don't have any, any type of healthy coping are more likely to get in trouble with the law. Um, and I think the same thing applies here. We have all this time on our hand. Well, not everyone, but there's a lot of people who now have all of this time on their hand. And it's like, what do I do? Well, the liquor store is open. Um, you know, I, I can I can smoke all day. I can play video games all day. Um, and so I think this time from a family perspective is being able to build those relationships with family. A lot of times um, parents aren't able to spend time with their kids because mm -hmm. they have three, four jobs. Um, if you're all at home, this is a time to start doing family activities. This is a time to start having conversations that you guys haven't had before. Um, you know, I, I've also noticed, um, including myself, like there's a lot of things that I don't know about my parents and this is a good time to figure out, you know, what was your childhood like as a kid? Like these are deep, these are conversations that are essential for family building, um, being able to connect with each other for on a, on a different level other than, you know, clean your room go eat, go to bed, you know, those, right. those, those kind of structural things that are happening while you're working and stuff and you're tired. Um, and so building relationships and creating a structure um, and a ritual in the, in the household, this is a great time to start doing that. Mm, that is good, man. Can I oh, take it back off that? Please do. Please. Um, also, like how he's talking about the, the troubled youth, a lot of times um, parents don't know that this thing is affecting the kids too. Yeah. Um, I have a, a second grader, man, he is not feeling this online learning. He's like, I am not having it. Like, this is not real to him. Like yeah. me getting on the internet this is not real school. Like, I, why do I need to do this? Right. And it, it causes him some anxiety because I don't want to be looking at this screen if it ain't a video game. I don't want to do that. Right. <laughs> and so, but really though, like I bet a lot of the kids are, are anxious about this. Um, you know, them not being able to connect with their friends and, you know, their teachers and just the, the supports that they have at school. Um, don't even want to get into the ones that are being abused and not being fed. Um, but it's, yeah, it, it affects the whole system yeah. for sure. Yeah. I, I like that. I even like, I think about, um, in the mental health world, we over diagnose kids. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those things that I see as being a foreseeable problem as like, you know, not to be patient with our kids because kids are not born to be uh, still for eight hours a day. Um, right. they, they need to be active, they need to be moving. And so this is not an ADHD problem. This is, we need to integrate, like how can we be active, move, interact, mm -hmm. things that are just like, over the internet and technology is a huge thing right now. Um, and it's becoming a part of the school system and they're giving laptops. My niece got a, a tablet for school right. uh, where she do homework on, play games on. That's a lot of screen time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're, they're, this is a, um, th this Corona can really, as you guys have both said, affect kids, but 
I, I, I sense, and I don't want this to happen. I pray it doesn't. I don't want Corona or COVID-19 to stunt a child's growth. Mm. I don't want that to happen because you, you see that parents, you know, they may get overwhelmed with working at home and then they have to stop what they're doing in a meeting or will care for the child. And then, okay, they have work going behind. And it's like, you know, the kid is important and then they're, they're not having that care that they had at school. And I don't want this Corona to impact the growth in the child's mind and to be a stunting factor. That's, that's scary to me. Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Realistically, it probably will. Yeah. Some kids, it probably will. Um, it's just like if you think about summer, right? Where the kids are not, but those the summer, though, they're not having any option to, hey, do this packet real quick or, you know, get, jump online, do this activity. Um, I kind of look at it as like summer, but they actually have something to do. Um, where, um, like, I'm finding that I have to balance um, still working full time and then having you know, to come home with my son. It's like the same thing that we've been doing, but it's just different because there's no really opportunity for him to do work at school. Everything has to be done at home. Mm-hmm. So having to find that that time. And then, of course, he's like, I don't want to do that. So um, it, I think it absolutely can if it's not, um, you know, taken seriously. Like, this is all they're getting. And you don't want six months of summer. True. Mm-hmm. With no nothing. No structure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know so i think it can but hopefully not hopefully not we're praying for it do not isolate yeah. connect stay connected yeah don't disconnect um you have individuals who most most individuals that have prior diagnoses have therapists and they have counselors and they have psychiatrists that they're working with um continue taking your medication if you're on them keep seeing your therapist i know every like we're leaning towards like telehealth, telemedicine. So everything is kind of through a screen like this. Yeah. Keep doing that. I know it sucks, but it, it's something to do. It's so that you're not just out there on a limb. Um, and then it, for the, for the um, individuals in the recovery community or um, substance use community, um, stay connected to your sponsors, find some AA groups, um, that you can attend online, stay with those sober friends, do not link up with the ones that aren't, um, those kind of things, like, it's going to be crucial to people, like, making it out of this some somewhat decent, um, yeah. Yeah, cool, I want to echo that heavily, um, one of my community members, uh, mentors, and people that I work with, uh, talked about not using the term social distancing, because it, it who think that they need to isolate. Yeah. You gotta, you, y'all got to talk about that more. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Um, I haven't even thought about that. Well, well, switching it to physical distancing. Versus right. Distancing because people are taking social distance as I need to isolate myself. And you don't have to isolate yourself. And um, you just got to be intentional about how you're being in proximity to other people. Yeah. Um, so be, whether that's, you know, I know a couple friends, they're doing like um, happy hour Zoom where they all get together and they just like, you know, have conversations and they talk and they show what they've been doing throughout the week. Um, Mm -hmm. I have this called Fire Night where every other Friday we all get together and we paint um, and we make food and we do like a little potluck style. And so now we just do that over over Zoom. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Hmm, People don't realize that you could still do the same things that you were doing as far as social activities. We do in church online. We Mm -hmm. doing everything else online, you know, so you can still stay connected online. I mean, it's, it's different, but right now, like he was talking about earlier, the change, we have to adapt, you know, we have to change what we're doing so that we get, you know, good results out of this. Wow. Social dis don't social distance me yeah, physical. It drives me nuts. Yeah. I, hate that. I never even thought about that. that's good. I, my mind no. is right there. It's I, the it, way that the the they word that the way they word things. Mm-hmm. Um, just like the word essential. Why would you word it? Asse- it ain't essential. Like it just ain't. You know. So social distancing versus physical distancing. Because you even go to the store if you, you know, get an essential items. I'm about to go. Um, <laughs> people won't even talk. They won't even speak and say hello anymore. There's no more social nothing. Everyone is 
in their own zone. It's like it's like everyone's like a zombie. Like yeah. it's spooky. My wife and I were on a walk last week, and you know we're, people are practicing social but yet physical distancing. And we're on a walk, and this elderly lady she sees us, and she about runs in the street and about to fall and bust her head because it's, I had yeah, it's like, I, I, I'm not scared, man. <laughs> it's like I'm outside. I'm I'm far enough away from you. I'm not coming to give you a hug. Just just walk by <laughs> me and hold your breath if you're scared. Right. Hold your breath right. for ten seconds. But yeah, yeah, but I think that I think that goes to like what is mental health. And when we hear words like social distancing, whether we understand what that means or not, we we internalize that. So it's like, oh, I can't be social with people because right. the world is telling me not to be social. Yeah. And that mental thing, like we are social beings. So right. to not be social takes away from our being. Um, and so we can still do those things. You can still go on bike rides with people and be at a distance. You can still walk on Saturday. Go on walks. And be in the distance. Um, it's, it's, it's being intentional about it and not and not you know being ignorant about how we're acting and, and, and engaging with one of another. Man, that's amazing. So a lot of people when they think of mental health, they think that somebody is really going cuckoo for cocoa puffs. But what I have what I'm starting to understand from you all educating me is I'm doing we're doing this episode is that like mental health is it, it really it stretches your mind like like it's not i'm gonna ask this i don't even know how to explain explain what I'm like, like, we don't have an answer <laughs> we can't explain like, it people think mental health oh, okay you're, you're you're depressed mental health you're dealing with an anxiety mental health you have panic attacks but it's like it seems as if there's so much more to it there is. am i making sense absolutely absolutely okay, you're not supposed to have favorite clients, but I got favorite clients. And my favorite clients are the ones who understand that piece because it's not about coming in when life is like at your very lowest because now you need other essential services before you start to actually work on your mental health. Now you may need to look towards medication. Now you may need to like look towards other support systems because you're not able to like make the proper changes because it's too difficult depending on your circumstance. And so I think the people that flourish the most when they come to therapy are people who understand that I don't have to be uh, ill or I don't have to be in this deep sunken place in order to work on myself. I can work on myself when I'm healthy. I can work on myself when, when think when life is good and I can improve from there. We can keep elevating. Mm. Um, so I, I, I like that question. You just said something. I think about, but physical health, right? Physical health, mental health. You don't just go to the gym just when you're fat or just when you're out of shape. I, I'm <laughs> in shape. I still go to the gym because I want to maintain and get better. It's the right. same thing with mental health. Just because you're in a good mental space, you shouldn't just stop. You should continue to build yourself up so your mental health can get stronger. So when the time like corona comes around, it's just, I'm good. I'm in right. a strong mental health capacity. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I cut you off, Kiana. Did you say something? <laughs> Yeah, well, and I also want to say this. There's a difference between mental health and mental illness. Uh, you might, well, everybody no. has mental health. Everybody yeah. has, right? But not everybody has a mental illness. Uh, and like he said, there's not, there's no wrong time to ever work on that. Can you explain what um, to? Yeah, mental illness is where you're starting to put, like, the labels that everyone is, you know, especially in the Black community, is very stigmatized, right? Ooh, you... You got that? You got that anxiety? Ooh. You know, um, that's just that's just what it is. If you have a broken uh, arm, you're going to go to the doctor. They're going to diagnose you. They're going to treat you. It's the yeah. same thing. So mental health, that's your that's your emotions. That's how you're dealing with things. That's am I happy today? Am I sad today? Why am I happy or sad today? What's affecting me? Mm. Um, mental illness is I have this. That's this serious. is something I deal with. It doesn't really go away. I'm learning how to manage it so I can live, you know, a, a, a stable life. Yeah. Um, so those are things like anxiety, depression, substance use, eating disorders, all that stuff. Mental yeah. illness. You, but you it can be. Hmm? So you, you just help me out. I will, ne <laughs> I will never, ever mess those definitions up. Again. We're going to put that on the shirt. Mental health is not mental illness. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I, even piggy, piggy and back off of that, 
I think about uh, an example of that is um, whether you drink or not, just because you take a sip doesn't mean you're alcoholic. No, uh, it does not. If you're sad today, it doesn't mean that you're depressed. If right. you're anxious today, it doesn't mean that you have anxiety. Those illnesses, what it's saying is that when you drink so much that you're not able to function, and so you have a substance abuse disorder. When you are so down that you can't get yourself out of that downness, now you're in depression. Mm -hmm. um, you are so anxious that you're worrying about everything around you, everything that you do, all your actions, and everything that comes into your mind. Now you have anxiety, excessive anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, but all of those things on its own is normal. We get sad. We get mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Worry. worry is a normal function. Without worry, right. you wouldn't be able to function. Mm -hmm. And so right. the piece is when it happens too much, when you have too much of it. Yeah. I think the, the manual we use says uh, six months consistently. If you're having these, these feelings for six months consistently, then you go. And even then, no one's slapping a label on you. No one's mm -hmm. diagnosing you the first time. Yeah. Because it, could, it very well could be you had some extenuating cir circumstances in your life, like mm -hmm. COVID-19. And, and they say, oh, well, it was the circumstance and not so much that you have this. Mm -hmm. So let's give you some, some coping skills so that you can get through this. Yeah. Now, if, if we give you the stuff and over time this is not getting better, then okay, maybe you do have this and we want to get you the help we need. And here's another thing, psychiatrists and stuff, they're not out here to just pump you with pills. I think that's another common misconception that people, that people don't want to go see the, the therapist or the shrink, right? Um, they're just gonna give me pills. No, we don't want to just give you pills. We want you to function normally without the pills. Now, if you need them, we want you to be on them because some people can't have a normal life without it. Schizophrenics, they can't have a normal life most times without, without pills, yeah. but that's not the goal. That's amazing. So the time is uh, moving by quick and we don't want to hold y'all too long. So I'm gonna ask y'all two more questions and we're gonna, we gonna get out of here. So uh, during this time of Corona, there's, there, what resources do people have? Because I know that resources have had to shift from being in person to now being over the phone or uh, social media or internet, whatever it may be. So what resources, resources do people have during this time if they're struggling with their mental health? Well, there's one um, where you can hit the nail on, on everything. It's a website um, yeah. called SAMHSA. Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. No. You pull that site up, you can get whatever you need. You can get treatment, you can get um, substance use help um, in your area. You type in your, your zip code and it boom, 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 ping a bunch of places that are right next to you. Oh, that's amazing. Yep. Um, and then there's also, I should have looked it up, another website where you can get online um, AA and NA meetings, uh, alcohol, Al Alcoholics Anonymous and um, Narcotics Anonymous um, meetings. Um, I'm going to look it up, but um, you can get those air meetings in your area. And now most of them are online. There's really no excuse for you not to join them. Sure. Um, and then I would say to the National um, Suicide Prevention Hotline. Yeah. Um, That's a phone number, correct? Is a phone number. 1-800-273-8255. You know that by and, then, and then if you don't want to if you don't want to call, you can text them. You can All they right. will text you back and forth. So it's connect to 741-741. You I heard that people it. connect to 741-741. And you don't have to be the person that needs the help. You can call on your next door neighbor if she All acting right. like she needs some help. You can call on anybody and they'll, they'll come. There's mobile services that'll come out to your house and, and mm -hmm. help you right there on the spot. You can, you can get everything you need. They got resources. For, there's no more excuse. There's resources. There's so many. Wow. And our information will be uh, on here. So connect with one of us if you need to. Yep. Larry, what, 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 uh, what resources are available for anybody struggling during this time? Yeah, one of them is one that you already said um, was the uh, Substance Abuse and Mental Health um, website. Definitely go there um, and you can search in your area and, and whatever location you're at, um, open services and things that you can do. Um, if you're in a crisis moment, uh, you can always call the COPE hotline. Um, I know, I think they have a different number for each city, but the Minneapolis one is 612-566-7000. Uh, 
5961223 um and that's the hotline um for uh psychiatric emergencies um uh also i know multiple agencies have been switching um totally to online um and so being you can, you can still receive mental health therapy kente circle you can still receive uh services and that's where i work um, that one is the 612-243-1600. You can schedule an appointment, take insurances, all of that. Um, uh, we don't have a crisis number at Kente Circle, but the COPE one or the Substance Abuse Mental Health website, you can go to those to find some of those as well. Yeah, this is amazing. These people have given resources for anybody who is struggling. There is no more excuses. A lot of people, man, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. They just told you what you can do. There's resources to help you out. So before we get out of here, I'm going to ask you one more question. I'll be going big G, little woe. So we know that in between, it's a platform that is set to empower people to make the right choice. So in a quick synopsis, uh, to summarize everything that we've talked about, what is it that you want to empower people uh, concerning mental health to be able to make the right choice? Larry? Yeah, uh, mental health um, is something that is in your control. Um, and how you manage that is by creating a structure for yourself, by um, creating community and having resources around you that support your goals and desires and your needs uh, from a daily perspective, from a weekly perspective, from a yearly perspective. Um, and so create those things. Trial and error, you're going to mess up some days. You're going to do good at it some days. But track your health and manage your health. Um, we can do as much research as we want on, on the humanity, and yet you as an individual are different. And so your health is going to be determined by how you manage it yourself. Um, and only you know that. And so um, just to remember that we're in charge of our health and that you're, you're in control. Mm. Kiana? Yes. I like to say that I'm a guide, uh, a tour guide, here to just guide you through life. Um, now, what you take is up to you. Um, your mental health can definitely be managed. Um, and uh, we want you to have a life that's, you know, worth living um, and manageable. Um, and if I could say one word, I would say connect, stay connected, stay in cahoots with your people. Um, don't venture off into your own island. Don't, um, don't disconnect. Stay connected so that you can stay on top and remain self-aware of, of how you're feeling. Um, you're going to have up and ups and downs. Um, that's normal. Um, but reach out. Don't just sit in that. Don't wallow in that because then that's when you get into that hole that you feel like you can't get out of. Um, but there are resources. There are people to help you that want to help you. We understand. We've been through it. Um, those in the, in the recovery community, keep fighting. You can do it. I say it all the time, keep fighting. It's a fight. It's an everyday fight, um, but you will win. Just keep at it. Man, thank you guys so much. These people, Kiana and Larry, have empowered us with knowledge so that we can make the right choice and better choice. I appreciate y'all for coming out. As always, as always, people, please subscribe, like this video, and always comment and share this thing with everybody. So let's be empowered to make the right choice. Make, make the right choice. Peace.